I'm Alex Isaac and I'm here at Cybus 2019. I'm at the brand new Spotlight stage. Now, this is a platform with a difference. It's where financial leading experts come to give quick fire presentations about the leading industry trends. And joining me today is Ushin Alumi. He's an award winning marketer and senior contributor to Forbes, and Imran Gullam Hussein Walla, who's gone OBE, and the trustee of UK Open Banking Implementation Entity. Thank you both for coming today. Now, Ashin, you've been hosting the Spotlight stage this week. So can you tell me, what are the main themes? Um, well, so far this morning, in terms of open banking, I think the main thing that's really come out to me is this shift that we're seeing in many industries, which is away from a mindset of uh, designing products to one of offering services through to where we are now, which is one of designing journeys through interconnected ecosystems. And that's something I'm hearing loud and clear. So it kind of speaks about the importance of APIs. It speaks about the importance of secure partnerships in the banking and financial services sector. And there's some amazing work being done, uh, both in the UK and abroad, around exactly this point. Imran, you've been overseeing the journey for open banking in the UK. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I think the first thing to say is it's absolutely fantastic that Cybos is shining such a light on open banking. Open banking is something that we've been working on really hard for the last two stroke three years. Um, and now we're coming to the end of the beginning. And by that, I mean that in the, here in the UK, we've been working hard on implementing the open banking standards, which is basically the way that we are treating PSD2 in the UK. So I look after nine banks. I ensure that they um, are writing a good standard and that they implement that standard well. And I would say now that we're about 95% of the way through implementation, and we are just now at the stage of growing the ecosystem. And in 2020, that's when I expect to see big customer adoption. Ushin, what do you think the benefits are for the customer themselves? Well, I, I was very heartened when Imran revealed earlier that uh, part of um, your kind of guidance to, to banks is, uh, you know, there's actually a CX chapter of your implementation. Uh, and I think that's wonderful. That's where you need to be in this world of connected ecosystems. You can't really get away with just designing a product in your silo or just offering a service in your silo. You really have to put yourself empathetically in the shoes of the customer and look at their entire customer journey, look at the emotional context of their journey. Um, so one thing I, I would really recommend is uh, everybody adopting this thing called empathy maps. And that's how really you kind of map out the customer journey, but not only look at their kind of experience, but look at their emotions. And I think if you put yourself as a provider in the shoes of the customer emotionally, this is where you can really get some great insights. Now, obviously we're seeing a lot of growth uh, in the open banking industry. Are you seeing growth with third party providers? Absolutely, and I think that's one of the most important things for us to see because you've got to remember that open banking standards, which were technical to begin with, and then as you say, now include also user experience or customer experience, um, and are now mobile first. All of that together is just an enabling technology. On top of the enabling technology, we need third parties to sit and develop those propositions. And sometimes they're fintechs, but often they're as much uh, OEMs from, as in telecom manufacturers, they're insurance companies, credit reference agencies, other banks themselves. And the bit that I'm really excited to see is that we've now got over 300 third parties that have joined the open banking ecosystem. Now they're going through various stages of getting authorized by the FCA, and then they'll actually connect in a production environment, and then they'll bring those propositions to markets. But open banking is not a thing for consumers, it's the third parties that turn that thing into real propositions. You mentioned that the empathy maps, and we were talking about the customer experience. Do you think this could revolutionize the way that you know, customers are using banking? 100% because I think it enables uh, providers to look at the customer journey in an entirely new way, to look at it from the point of view of the context, what else is happening in their lives. And of course, if you have this world of interconnected ecosystems, you actually have access to that information. So um, I heard of an example of one of our speakers is going to be on stage later today. Uh, their banking app will not only give you an alert if you're coming close to the end of your balance, it will look at what else is happening in your life in terms of, uh, you know, do you qualify for a grant based on your uh, salary and your last tax statement? And if you do, it'll say, hey, we think you're, you might be in financial trouble. Um, here's somebody to contact about getting a grant towards your heating this winter. So that's the kind of amazing innovation that open banking really enables. It's, you know, applying this incredible overview of the context of people's lives and then actually offering offering real profound value for them. As a trustee, obviously you've been leading the UK and the EU is also leading the way in open banking. Do you think this can reach a global phenomenon? I certainly hope so. The way that I like to describe it is in the UK, 
Well, maybe in Europe, what we have is mandated open banking. That's effectively what PSD2 is. In UK, we've decided to take a standardized approach to open banking. So that's one API that now 99% of the UK market can connect to in order to make open banking work. But the thing is, is that all over the world, particularly um, as far away from Australia, New Zealand to Brazil and Mexico, Canada and so on, they're all trying to understand more about open banking. And for me, the reason for that is a really simple one. There's a growing acceptance, wherever you are in the world, that the data that the bank holds on the customer belongs to the customer and not to the bank. And what does open banking do? It allows customers to take back control of their data. And obviously, you're talking about apps and how we're moving forward and getting everyone in integral. Do you think that that design is really important to the customer experience? 100%. I mean, there's, it's, it's what facilitates the customer experience in our connected, context-aware world. Um, you know, it, it, the fact that open banking opens up new APIs, it opens up standardized APIs, it enables people to, it, to interconnect and different services to interconnect more freely. It means that you can really offer innovative services uh, very, very quickly through open APIs in the cloud. So you can launch new innovative products and services and solutions to, you know, that are really empathetic in terms of the design on a, a global basis. So open banking is really powering innovation around service design and around product design. Imran, you mentioned 2020 is like a, a date that things are going to be seen. Is what's going to happen in the future? What's next? Well, I think the reason I say 2020 is really important is because the implementation is going to be finalized in 2020. And, that's, and then what we've got is all of those 300 or so fintechs that are plugging into it. They're going to actually start producing real products for real customers and then pushing them into the market. Over at the Open Banking Implementation Entity, we monitor around 75 different propositions. One of those is going to involve a killer app. But I think the thing that really excites me about open banking is that what we're doing for current accounts actually is predicated on what we call uh, data interoperability and portability. And that same principle can be applied to many other products within financial services. And what we're seeing now is some big discussions with government around things called open finance, which will do what we're doing for current accounts to mortgages, savings, uh, insurance, pensions and then actually potentially even rolling that out to non-financial services sectors because the same concept applies to your water bills, your electricity bills, your broadband bills, your mobile bills, and we'll see where that takes us. Looks like it could be a very interesting future. Well, thank you so much, Imran and Ashin, for joining me today and talking to me about open banking. Mm -hmm.